uh, let me ask Brian about it. Brian, was the best quote from the weekend <laughs> Swaggy P saying, I went from getting snitched on to putting a ring on? <laughs> it was pretty good. <laughs> I know it was the best quote, but it was pretty good. Good Lord, man. It's amazing. The guys that can win championships with teams like the Warriors is right. fascinating. Let's cut to the chase. Man, he added something to the Is team. LeBron coming to the Lakers? I don't know. I think he's got a lot. He's got a lot of things to do, man. Um, he's going to have to decide. He, in my view, he's going to have to make a compromise. So is he going to compromise being on the, the team that has a chance to win the championship? Is he going to compromise, like, location? What I mean by that is, you know, his family doesn't have any connection to Philadelphia or Houston or San Antonio. Does he want to take his family to one of those places, especially when his boys are about to go to high school? Um, I don't know. Does he want to compromise um, you know, maybe being on the best team to be in a place he wants to be. Um, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be a certain set of compromises and he's got two different windows he can take. He has a choice of opting into his contract and forcing a trade like Chris Paul did, which means he'd never be a free agent, which means this will be over by the end of the month. Or he has the option of waiting until the first few days of July to see what some teams out there do to build the teams and then come in, you know, after July 4th and make up his mind. In other words, I don't think he'll be the first player to a team and then bring guys with him. I think he'll want the team to be set up than him to walk in. There's a lot of X factors at play. Um, you know, the Lakers, to me, the Lakers, if they get LeBron and Paul George, will be a wonderful place to play. They will, uh, I'm sure, it, it, you know, Laker games will be electric again. Um, it'll be wonderful. All those Sunday afternoon games on ABC but I don't think that's a team that I can say is going to get out of the second round. Now, maybe Brandon Ingram develops. Maybe Lonzo takes a step forward. Maybe they make another trade. There are certain unknowns that nobody can say for sure. But LeBron can't look at that team and say, oh, yeah, we're beating the Rockets or the Warriors. To me, the thing that LeBron should do is he should call Kevin Durant and ask him, hey, would you be interested in coming to L.A. with me? That, to me, is his perfect scenario. But Durant has no real incentive to leave Golden State. He's also said he intends to stay. So if I'm LeBron, I make the call just to make the call. But other than that, I don't know if he can convince himself he'd be on the best team in L.A. next year, and that's what the Lakers are going to have to go up against. Also, everybody respects the hell out of Magic. Everybody thinks that Rob Palenka is a competent basketball executive, but they don't have the history of saying we've built champions. Hey, Google, call Maddie. Okay, dialing now. Hey, Google, call my brother. Hey, Google, call my brother. Text Carol. Teams before. There would be a leap of faith. Now, it's, it, it would be a, a, a calculated gamble that the Lakers organization has always been able to, to deliver titles and deliver championships. And you'd say, all right, I believe that we will do another one. But it was a bit of a leap of faith there. And those are all things that he's going to have to weigh when he considers the Lakers. And all in all, Brian, where do you think he goes? Just I don't have. A, I honestly don't have an answer right now. I don't because I need to see the same scenarios that he needs to see. We have a draft coming up. You know, last year on draft night, we saw one All NBA player, Jimmy Butler, get traded, and we saw another one, Paul George, come to the one yard line of getting traded, and he got traded a week later. So I don't know what the league is going to look like in ten days. I sure as hell don't know what the league's going to look like on July fifth when he may be getting serious about making up his mind. So it'd be real hard for me right now to make a prediction. Brian, is there any chance he stays in Cleveland? Absolutely. I think that's on the board. I think the Cavs are excited about their draft pick. I think the Cavs are excited about the possibility that there could be a player that drops and there's a team behind them that gets excited and tries to trade up and they can still get um, a, a reasonable draft pick plus maybe add another piece and they can come to LeBron on July 1st and say, hey, look, we've already done this and we have plans A, B, and C. Um, I think the Cavs are hamstrung on certain things because of what their payroll is and because they have limited uh, options, but I don't think the Cavs think they're out of it at all. Hmm. If you're LeBron James and your team traded for Jordan Clarkson, you still trust him to make the right choice in terms of the draft? It's a fair question, LD. I mean, I mean, I, I, I see Cleveland as a viable option until I start asking myself who's making these decisions. Right. And that's when I get nervous. And that's when I look at the Lakers and I go, they show, they haven't shown me if they can win a chip. That is true. But what they have shown me, though, is that they can dump bad players and they can make smart moves to free up cap space. And they've shown you that in yeah, a very short period of time. Say, and this isn't a Lakers answer. 
I can walk up and destroy a sandcastle on the beach. Anybody can tear a team down. It's building the team. <laughs> That's the tough part. Yeah. I mean, give, give me a year and the controls to a franchise, I'll make them a bad team. <laughs> it's, it's the building that's the hard part um uh look with la there would be a gamble there would be a gamble that they would still get better after what happens this summer but there is gambles every single place he's gonna have to choose his compromise guys and this next month is probably him trying to figure out what compromise he's gonna choose brian winhorse joining us here on Keyshawn george and lz Brian, LeBron's obviously been spotted in Los Angeles. You mentioned he doesn't have any real connections um, to those other cities. Although in Philadelphia, they went through some changes over the last week with the general manager, Colangelo, out. Somebody else will soon be in. Will that play a major? major factor in his decision making in Philadelphia see I don't think LeBron cares who the coach and general manager of the team are um, he will tell you that when he signed with the Cavs in 2014 he did not know who their general manager was he did not know it was David Griffin I find that hard to believe he has said that <laughs> he didn't know uh, I think he sees the coach and general manager as ancillary I think the issue and I think the ownership is important you have to get on the same page with the owner and say, hey, we're willing to do this and that with you here. But I think the bigger issue in Philadelphia is him sitting and talking to Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid. Can we come up with a way we're going to play together? Because the last eight years, LeBron has played with a big man whose primary role is to get the hell out of the lane on offense and stand in the corner. And, yes, we'll throw you two or three post-ups in the first quarter, but generally you're going to wait in that corner, and I'll decide if I'm going to deliver the ball to you or not. And Chris Bosh and Kevin Love have had – they have rings on their fingers because of LeBron. But, you know, Joel Embiid would have to make an understanding. Uh, I'd be willing to do this or I wouldn't be willing to do that. Ben Simmons would have to be willing to say I'm not going to have the ball in my hand. I mean, that to me is the bigger issue of Philadelphia. Brian Winhorse joining us here on Keyshawn, George, and LZ. LeBron made a mention a number of times over the last few days about high IQ players and basically wanting to play with high IQ players. He mentioned that some of the guys that he had played with uh, in different uh, stops or whatnot. When you look at that Lakers roster, there's a lot of inexperience, which I happen to think that means that they're not bad players as far as their IQ is concerned, but they're certainly inexperienced, which I don't think puts them in the upper echelon of high IQ players. Do you believe that the Lakers would have to move some of their young talent to get in more veteran-type players uh, if they were to acquire LeBron? I think the Lakers' challenge is not necessarily youth. I think they would need shooting because, again, this is a, it, took a long, it took seven or eight years for teams to figure out how you build a team around LeBron. And the Heat were the first ones to really do it, and the Cavs doubled down on it. You got to have three shooters on the court, ideally four, but you got to have three. Who's shooting the ball? Now I know Kuzma has has moments, um, but you like you need you know, look at you know Ray Allen, uh, Kyle Korver, um, uh, J.R. Smith was you know at times been a great three point shooter. Kyrie Irving. Um, you need snipers, and the Lakers just don't have those snipers. So let's say tomorrow LeBron says, I'm going to the Lakers. The Lakers would be in an all-out hunt to get shooting. Now, it can be done, but it's just not there right now. And the question is, would it take them a year to get those players? Would it take them a month? I don't know. But, you know, it, it, it's more than just the IQ. I, I actually think he was complimentary, uh, I believe, of Lonzo about playing the right way. And I think he would. there would be times where he'd play with Lonzo – um, where he would love it. But there would be other times where he couldn't get in the lane because Lonzo's defender is standing there, or he would get in the lane and, and you know throw 10 perfect passes to Lonzo and he'd only make two of the threes, or he would get pretty frustrated with it. So I think that that's a factor as much as anything else. All right, Brian. There Thanks he is. For being on with you, Brian Winhorse. Thanks, Brian. Woo! Woo! Thanks, Brian Winhorse, ESPN NBA insider. With this yeah, I was going to ask him about Rondo, what he thought, but we can ask him next time. Uh, let me ask Brian about it. Brian, was the best quote from the weekend Swaggy P saying, I went from getting snitched on to putting